In the last video, I showed you the beautiful California condor I got to see at the Grand Canyon. Today, we are going to slow it down and show you the actual Grand Canyon in all its rocky glory. And you guessed it, today we talk about the rocks, but also mules, my denial about the difficulty of the hikes I choose to do, and my experience camping in 19 degree temperatures, which I thought was a good idea at the time. Good morning from the Grand Canyon. It's about 32 degrees and it's 6.30 a.m. The sun's gonna rise in about a half hour here. So we got to the Bright Angel Trailhead. Uh, there's very, very limited parking. So you wanna get here as early as possible to try to get some parking near the trailhead. Otherwise you're gonna have to uh, park in one of the commuter lots and take a shuttle over. I have never seen the trail this empty. This is awesome. Definitely come when it's below freezing. <laughs> No, but seriously, this is nice. All right, here we go. 3,000 feet down. Yay! Bright Angel Trail is located at the south rim of the Grand Canyon, which is the more popular destination for seeing and hiking the Grand Canyon, as it has more accommodations and amenities and is maintained in the winter compared to the north rim. The Bright Angel Trail is neat because it takes you slowly down into the canyon with rest houses every mile and a half, giving you the opportunity to rest, use the bathroom, and to look back up from where you came from and ponder if you could walk back up that canyon wall from that point. Now, if you are looking for a quiet national park experience anywhere, the best way to do it is to go in the off season and to get an early morning start. Plus, seeing the sunrise over the most beautiful landscapes in the country is a sight you will never forget, I promise. I am loving these cloudy days that I'm getting. Those beautiful sunrises and sunsets. The nice thing about this hike is that you literally have the best view in the world the entire time that you're hiking. So when you're suffering walking back up, you have a great view to keep you going. <laughs> Now, rather than droning on and on about how the Colorado River's erosion and plate tectonic movements created the Grand Canyon we see today by carving through the sedimentary rock deposits over many, 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 many years, I think it would be more fun to talk about some of the fun facts instead. Just one more thing about the rocks first, because I can't help myself and I think it's a fun fact. So the reason why the Grand Canyon is anywhere from 2,000 to 8,000 feet above sea level is because of a plateau uplift caused by plate tectonics. The weird thing about this though is that usually during plate uplifts, the rocks are deformed like we see at various mountain ranges. But this did not happen in or around the Grand Canyon, but rather the land simply lifted up. And geologists are still working out how and why this occurred in this unique way. This allowed for the Colorado River to do the rest of the carving through the plateau and create the beauty we see before us today. That was pretty fun, right? It's so beautiful. Like it's pretty during the day, but like there's something about the early morning sun hitting it. I really need to stop recording this. I'm gonna run out of space. I recorded like a video on every single switchback that I've turned around. I'm like, oh wow, look at this sunrise. It's really pretty. You guys get the gist. <laughs> All right, I promised I would stop talking about rocks now. So fun fact number one, the Grand Canyon in its totality is bigger than the whole state of Rhode Island, which is pretty crazy to think about. As Rhode Island has a population of around 1.09 million people in it. But then again, Rhode Island is also super tiny. So there's probably a lot of things that is bigger than the state of Rhode Island, but still cool. So this is the part of the hike where you should ask yourself, can I physically walk back up as far as I've come down? So as you probably have noticed by now, the Grand Canyon is grand and deep. And with each change of 1000 feet in elevation, there is a change of temperature of 5.5 degrees. As we learned from Death Valley, the lower you go, the hotter it gets. So on my hike, elevation gained on the hike was 3,400 feet. So I experienced a change of temperature of 18.7 degrees on my hike alone. 
This is why it's important to pack tons of water, especially if you are going in the summer. It will only get hotter as you hike down into the canyon. It was very strange though as it was winter at the top of my hike and then summer at the bottom of my hike. Fun fact number three is that President Theodore Roosevelt was responsible for protecting the Grand Canyon as a protected land back in 1906 and later made into a national monument. He said that this canyon took nature thousands of years to create and is something that can't be bettered by people. People can only mar it, so it should be left the way we found it. The early way of saying leave no trace. So it has been protected land for 117 years now. So make sure to leave it as you found it so it can be enjoyed for many years to come by its millions of visitors each year. I'm still debating whether I should keep going down or turn around. I do have the whole day. I don't know. I decided to go for it, so we'll just take it slow, take a lot of breaks. It'll be fun. This is probably a very bad idea, <laughs> but I don't care. I'm determined now. And if you didn't know, there's actually places you can camp and lodge in the canyon itself. Although you do have to book your trips probably a year in advance because it's very popular. The Phantom Ranch is halfway through the canyon and is a popular spot to sleep for the night when doing the rim to rim hike or just hiking out and back for the best chance to see all of the canyon from top to bottom. And if you don't feel like walking there, why not take a mule down? I will say, I was a bit jealous walking up the canyon with the mules passing me as I was gasping for air. They were pretty cute though. I decided not to go all the way down to the bottom of the canyon on this visit, but rather I went to Plateau Point, and I'm sure glad I did because this is where I got a chance to see the California condor. What I didn't show you last time was that the bird had flown away, so I got near the edge of a cliff to take the picture of the view. This is when the bird came back and flew way too close to my head for comfort, as I was standing awfully close to the cliffside. Naturally, I freaked out because the condor was bigger than me, so audio has been redacted due to colorful freaking out language that was used as a 20 pound bird with a nine foot wingspan flew towards my head on the edge of a cliff with no witnesses. That bird was coming for me. <laughs> the 13.3 mile out and back trail was not too bad on the way down. But now it was time to ascend the 3,400 foot cliff walls back up to my Corolla. So I lost the jacket, rolled up my sleeve and convinced myself that this was no problem and I was in decent shape. I was feeling pretty good until the mules passed me. And then more people passed me with intense hiking gear, which was fine. But then young children and people double my age passed me with ease too. Moral of the story, I was inspired to a new New Year's resolution to do more cardio. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I died. <laughs> that was awesome, but exhausting. Woo! Man, that was fun though. I can't believe I saw that bird. Also, I really hope I didn't get weird sunburn. <laughs> like, oh, looks like I did. Yep. <laughs> Got the weird sunburn. <laughs> oh, whatever. It's fine. All right, I am fed and taken care of. <laughs> so now we can go watch the sunset at the Grand Canyon. Sunset at the Grand Canyon was equally as beautiful as sunrise as the sun's changing light illuminated all the different layers of sediment visible on the canyon walls. The nice part about it was I didn't have to hike anywhere to see it, because I honestly couldn't imagine walking one more mile after I got my butt kicked by that hike. I got to sit on the wall of the rim of the canyon and watch as the sun slowly lifted its light off the canyon and into the night sky until it was gone for good. And then the temperature dropped real quick, so I ran back to my car. And by ran, I mean awkwardly hobbled with my exhausted legs to drive to the campsite while blasting the heat. Definitely need to come back and do the rim to rim trail. I saw a bunch of people walking back from that. They looked defeated. But yeah, I'd like to try it. 
update it is 6 50 p.m and i am going to bed <laughs> so thank you all for watching the grand canyon adventure and tune in to tomorrow to whatever i decide to do because i haven't decided yet okay good night <laughs> It is 6.30 this morning, and I'm frozen. <laughs> I'm gonna get the car started to warm up. I can't believe I'm frozen inside. That's crazy. It's like the condensation that normally forms the frost. Yep, that's adding up. It's very cold. <laughs> I'm not used to this. This is a really cute little campsite I'm staying in near the Grand Canyon. Take a look. Also the sunrise. Yeah, it's cute. Today is definitely going to be a hot coffee kind of day. Final thoughts. Camping in 19 degrees was nice because there was always a cool side of the pillow but not something I would want to do over a long period of time. Honestly, 30 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal for sleeping weather for me and my Corolla, but it was a fun experience for sure. And everything is better with a hot cup of coffee. It is cold. Okay, I'm done complaining about the cold. I actually really like the fact that it's cold. It makes things interesting. And I kind of like this winter camping idea. So maybe we'll do this again. <laughs> it's kind of fun. All right, anyways, I am going to drink this, eat some breakfast, and then we will get on the road to the next location. <laughs>